Hello and welcome back to World 360. South Korea has just elected a new president in what appeared to be the country's most closely fought elections ever. Yoon suk Yeol, a conservative opposition candidate, claimed victory on Thursday after securing 48.56% of the votes. He will officially take office on May 10th, 2022. Yoon beat Lee Jae-myung from the ruling Democratic Party, who secured just 47.83% of the votes. Yoon clearly won by the skin of his teeth. Roughly 99.99% of votes were tallied this election. That means that Yoon had just a margin of 0.8%. According to American think tank CSIS, the vote gap between the two candidates stood at 274,151 votes, which makes it the closest presidential election in South Korea's history. Incumbent Moon Jae-in could not run for re-election as the presidency in South Korea is for a single term of five years. Now, Yoon's victory is significant because it marks the return of conservative power in South Korea five years after conservative Park Geun-hye was impeached in a corruption scandal. More so, 61-year-old Yoon is fairly new to politics. He studied law at the Seoul National University and spent nearly three decades of his career as a prosecutor. He is known as a hardliner on anti-corruption, having led high-profile investigations during the presidencies of conservative leaders Park Geun-hye and Lee Myung-bak. Then again, he also led some probes into some of President Moon's aides. In July 2019, Yoon was appointed by Moon as Prosecutor General. Not too long after, the prosecution under Yoon launched a corruption investigation into Cho Cook, one of Moon's closest aides and his pick for Justice Minister. Yoon and Moon's soured relationship became more obvious when, in the run-up to the recent election, the two started exchanging barbs. In early February, Yoon promised to launch a probe into what he called the deep-rooted evils, or in other words, deep-rooted corruption of the current administration, if he's elected. President Moon later demanded an apology from him and dismissed the corruption allegations. With you now president, it would be interesting to see how this plays out in South Korea's legislature. Yoon's Conservative People Power Party may have the presidential seat, but the Democratic Party still holds a majority in the unicameral National Assembly. Think of it as a Republican becoming US president while Democrats hold a majority in both houses of US Congress. It makes you wonder just how smoothly legislation will be passed. Let's look at where Yoon stands on the foreign policy front. He has promised a tougher reset on relations with China and North Korea and developing closer ties with the US. In fact, as US President Joe Biden congratulated Yoon, the two addressed threats posed by North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Now, Yoon is expected to more actively support President Biden's Indo-Pacific strategy as well as the Quad. It would also be interesting to see whether he can thaw relations between his country and neighboring Japan. In fact, Japan and South Korea's bilateral relations have reached new lows amid President Moon's tenure, mainly over wartime history disputes. In fact, upon Yoon's victory Thursday, Japan reportedly issued cautious congratulations. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida congratulated Yoon, adding that healthy ties between Japan and South Korea are indispensable for the peace, stability and prosperity of the world, which is currently dealing with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Before we conclude, it's worth mentioning Yoon's controversial stand on women's rights. One of his election pledges was to abolish the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family, formed in 2001, that focuses on assistance of women and their rights, and providing support to victims of domestic and sexual abuse. Yoon argued, saying that the ministry treats men like potential criminals. It was remarks like this that helped Yoon drum up support among male voters in their 20s, but has also led many to view him as an anti-feminist. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Krishnakuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print.in and follow us on social media.